the Fifth Amendment to the 1999 Constitution mandates the President to transmit the names of his ministerial nominees to the National Assembly within 60 days upon assumption of office. The President's first list of nominations that was presented earlier today was dominated by known names and politicians, including ex-governors, serving and former members of the Senate and House of Representatives. Out of these nominees, 25% are women, while 75% are men. The women are Beta Edu, Doris Aniche Uzoka, Anatsu, Musawa, Nkiru, Onye Jiocha, Stella Okotete, Nkiru, okay, Uju Kennedy, Ohane, and Iman Suleiman Ibrahim. As you must know, ministers in Nigeria are appointed by the president and form part of the executive branch of government. They are responsible for overseeing the various ministries and departments of government and for formulating and implementing policies in their respective areas. The specific role of ministers in Nigeria varies depending on the ministry they are assigned to and with the names presented on the ministerial list. Today we are asking, will this bring progress? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You could also tweet at us at Ways Show Africa with the hashtag <clears throat> Ways Show. I mean, so the first thing for me when I saw this list was, okay, thank God, at least seven out of 28 are women. So, I mean, that's a first step because I remember during the elections, we were talking a lot about, you know, women mm -hmm. participation and inclusion and all of that. So I'm happy to see that this um, present government is actually allowing or including the women in such cabinets, right? Um, I was also, well, would I say I was surprised to see certain names? Like, <laughs> like Mike, I know, I know. When I saw Mike's name, I'm like, okay. But yeah, before I say, I now like to hear what, um, I mean, we want to hear what the audience would have to say about this list today. So please, guys, we're waiting for you to call in. I'll open the phone lines very soon. But before I do that, I want to hear from the ladies. What, what are you, what's your take or what are your thoughts on this ministerial Why are you surprised to list? see Mike? I mean, he, he campaigned for the man, didn't he? I know. I know, he, right? I think he's a very... Um, controversial. Is that what you want? I don't even know if I would say controversial, but it just enlightens us on how tricky politics can be. Mm. Um, so it's, it's like... My uncle used to say something that politicians seem like they're fighting on the outside, but in the inside they're actually <laughs> friends. Mm. You know, I think I don't know how they're able to manage themselves <laughs> you know that much there's also a john enno also um on the list who tinibu had asked that um he was contesting for governorship and stuff so i'm like tinibu asked him to put his um what's the thing called when you him and the other contestant mary et etta also mm -hmm. were running for the post and i think he went to court for it also so tinibu told him to Put it aside, and I'm just thinking, oh, he did that because he, was he like, knew what he was going yeah, to do. Yeah, I have him something eventually. in for you, mm. you know. So it's like uh, everyone is lobbying for for positions as well, and which is very much interesting. But we just hope that these people can deliver. We're we're tired of seeing the same names, the same you know set of people that are being cycled, just changing positions. However, we're really praying that these people will bring progress, and because they have good. Um, backgrounds, good records. I mean, politics, take it aside, it's not easy to be a politician in Nigeria, and they, these are strong people coming out there. And I believe they do have a bit of um, credibility, mm. but let's, let's, yeah, not, let's, mean, let's have more good than, than, than the bad. Yeah, so like from, from the list, some of the women, like um, Beta, I know Beta is a very popular health enthusiast, you yeah. know. People, I've heard, I've read a lot about her, I mean, even before now, about how, I remember during the COVID-19, um, what's it called, the, 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 the pandemic, she was heading that, the palliative um, team in Cross River State, and she did a very fantastic job. She was also commissioner um, for health in, um, what's it called, in Cross River State as well, during the time of, um, what's that man's name now? Benjamin Yede. No, 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 Cross River. Yeah, so I know that she actually has the experience, and, and I strongly suspect, even though they haven't assigned the roles yet, mm -hmm. I strongly suspect and believe that she's the probably going to be Minister of Health. <laughs> That's Minister of Health knocking, knocking right there. There's also... Um, Hanatu, I know she also, her father, well, her father is a very known politician. She was also the women's uh, political leader 
for her this thing as well so i mean i hope that these people uh, they are bringing some experience to yeah. the table so they are not just you know regular people that he has picked he has actually looked at them and they seem to be somewhat credible and um, i'm only just hoping that we are able to see some level of progress from these people jenny yeah so um there were some credentials here that were very impressive to mm. me like stella okay right um so they say she has experience in policy design, in implementation, international development, and she also even has a certification in new models of business um, from the University of Virginia and risk management. And that kind of like stood out to me, right? Because the experience that she has seems like something that would work for the economy, right? To be able to predict Mm. what would happen next, right? How to manage resources, right? And how to channel the resources in the right direction, that kind of thing. Um, she was also a co-founder of the E-Girls Rights Foundation and has actively engaged with internally displaced persons at IDP camps in Meduguri and Abuja. And I think that's very, um, that's very impressive, yeah. right? And I really cannot wait to see what she brings to the table, how she would deliver. Because I feel like, I mean, there is there is a low playing field, there's medium, <laughs> and then you have the high levels, yeah. yeah, where everyone is, all eyes are on you, right? The expectations are usually high, especially for, for women. women. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see that. Um, another person that piqued my interest is um, Nkiruka Chidubim. Mm. Um, so for her, um, she was a commissioner for resource management and manpower development, mm. right? So when you look at these two women, they sound like powerhouses, yeah. right? These are people who have experience in things like this. And I'm excited. I'm <laughs> excited. But there's a particular credential that I saw that didn't speak much to me. It just um, looked more like fluff. Mm. Right, and that's um, Muhammad Idris. Now, when they were describing him and um, the work that he has done, they just said, Oh, he's a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. So basically, he's a media guru, right? Mm -hmm. He's into media, he's into public relations, he's a philanthropist. And um, there was one they said, um, He has attended several local and international workshops and conferences. And to me, Poor I feel, yeah. <clears throat> I'm like, Okay, you have attended these things. Okay, cool. <laughs> A lot of people have attended seminars, right? And to me, it's like, If you're bringing somebody on board, even if it's just paper, right? You're trying to amp up the resume so that it looks really good, mm. then you need to make it look really good right but this wasn't speaking anything to me again i'm interested mm. and i want to see how far these people would go the amount of progress that it gets to make right um there was something well that looked like they were trying to give him something to an extent right they said he led the committee that developed and implemented training guide that's um debt fund mm, okay yeah so that looks okay i'm like okay cool Cool, when cool, cool. But then the way they started it off, like lead, I'm like, <laughs> you know, you know when when you when you're trying to review your mm -hmm. CV, right? You say, oh, I led a team of. <laughs> just to look like you're a for me, like you're just <laughs> HOD. You're probably just team member. <laughs> but right, I'm 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 looking forward to it, right? I I really want to see what each of them um would do, right? Even Wiki, okay. right? Um, a lot of people don't have. Very good. Um, but what role do you think Wiki would Wiki might be given? Honestly, if you ask me, I don't know. Huh. That man is full okay. of surprises. Let, let's hear. Let's hear Noma's take. Noma, do you think looking going by this ministerial, ministerial list of nominees, do you think it's bring progress? What are your thoughts? Is it Noma there? Okay, I'm. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, we can hear you now. I was just saying thank you, Chinelo, for throwing me under the bus there. <laughs> no, I didn't. Do I think, do I really think that this would bring... Well, we. It, it, I think it's too early to know. Mm. Some of them, of course, we've seen uh, some of their um, outputs in different uh, positions that they've held either politically 
or by appointment and um, you know even if in their individual day-to-day uh, -day engagements but the thing about this uh, ministerial list is it's not uh, it, okay yes we have a list now and um, definitely this is not the end of the list. I think this there's, there's probably going to be a second list because um, supplementary if I'm list, correct? Yeah. Every, yes, okay. supplementary list because um, I think every state is supposed to be represented one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a little bit too early, but it's no news there because that we have politicians amongst the not the appointees because. The first, uh, I mean, the, the once uh, the president or incoming administration comes in, one of the first things they want to do is to be able to settle scores. And that has been the tradition or the way of doing things in Nigeria. After that, they're trying to settle scores or people who have supported through the campaign season and all of that. Yeah. Now they want to be able to say thank you so to speak so they are going to there's going to be a, a lot of that and that has been the tradition over time this is not the first time it's happening so it's no news that we're seeing people like uh, wike who is there of course we know all of the drama that surrounded the political season and um, it would have been questionable if he was not settled in one way or the other what my interest will probably be is in the different appointments. Mm -hmm. Who is going to be playing what role? Yeah. Because for some of them, it, 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 and this is very important, because um, if it is just done based on, I would want to see a lot of competence coming into play. Mm. Putting people, I think um, Jennifer was mentioning uh, the lady who was championing health during uh, 2020, um, during the pandemic and things like that. I want us to, I, I want well, the administration to be able Okay, I think uh, we lost Noma for a bit there. Yes, I think she was just trying to write on what the credentials are, what they've actually done before, yeah. and then hoping that they can actually do more now that they will be giving ministerial um, um, roles. There's an angle I want us to look at it from, but then before we do that, I think we should go on a break. When we come back, we'll take that angle. See you shortly. If you are just tuned in, you are still watching Ways and it's our ladies' night out and we are discussing the ministerial list and we're asking, will this really bring progress? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You could also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Also, our phone line is now open. We can't wait to hear from you. Please call us on 0702500749. The number to call again is 0702500749. So before we went on a break, I was saying that I wanted us to look at it from the tribal yeah. Angle, right? So Jennifer was saying when she saw this list, she was well, okay, okay, what's going on here? What's going on here? But when I said that, there are quite a number of northerners on the list. There are quite a number of southerners on the list as well. Um, I mean, I, I think off the top of my head, the Yoruba Pulaso was. I think the Femi Alake is on is on that list. Mm. There's also Baimo, what's his name now? That's also on that list. But I have noticed that Fagbemi rather. There's also Fagbemi. So there's Fagbemi, there's Adelabu, and there's Alake. Those are the three um, Yoruba people. I think Edwin is also Yoruba. Those are the four Yoruba people that I'm seeing on the list. And I'm like, okay, looks like there are quite a number of um, Northerners. There are quite a number of Southerners, South East, South South represented um, in this ministerial list that we are we are seeing here. Well, what, what's your thoughts on that, Jennifer? I think um, I'm quite okay with the fact that he was able to pick people from different tribes, mm. right? Um, I'm not tribalistic by nature, of course, right? For me, the most important thing is giving opportunity to those who are competent. Competence over tribe. Most definitely. Right? If, if you're from my tribe and you're not doing what is expected of you, then as far as I'm concerned... You should be young. Don't yeah, you should be out. <laughs> you shouldn't be there. Mm. Right? Even if, if... I mean, I'm Igbo. 
if they put in a Yoruba person and that person is doing well, I would rally behind you, right? I would support you with everything that I have, right? But if, if you're not delivering, then I don't see any reason why I should support you. That's why during the during the campaign and during the election, the whole tribal war was just abysmal to me. It, it, it was it was very chaotic to watch. And I saw a lot of um, educated and learned people being, um, they, they were siding with their own tribes. Just I'm just like, come on. At the end of the day, if, if the country is suffering, mm -hmm. everyone will suffer for it, right? If they give you um, ministry or well, minister of health, right? <laughs> and you're not doing anything with the health sector. It means that both Yorubas, Igbos, Calabas, Aousas, everyone would suffer for it. So I'm, I'm really not concerned about the tribe. I just want competent people, people who can deliver. Like um, Mary said, in two months, we should start asking you, what, where are your deliverables? <laughs> have you met your goal? <laughs> you have a target for one well, month. Of course, yeah. of course. Have, have you met it? Us. What percentage have you gotten to? Mm -hmm. What's the progress looking like, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. what, what are we to expect in the coming months? Do you have like proper plans yeah. in place, right? And how do you intend to meet to meet those goals or to achieve them. So, yeah. Ah, okay. We have a call already. Loman from Abia State. Hello, Loman. Good evening. Good evening, my beautiful. Good evening, Loman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I can hear you. Yeah. I'm happy to see all of you shining. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Loma. Thank you very much. I, I, I mean, personally, I feel like we should give them a chance. But then let's hear from Unoma. Unoma, so now, okay, this is my question, right? So now we've looked at this list. We've checked, you know, what's, we've read out their portfolios, yeah. what they have done. We've said, okay, maybe some of them are credible. For example, the woman with the health thing. Mm. We've looked at the woman with the fiscal policies and yeah. economic budget resources and all of that. And if somebody has that kind of experience is expected that the person is able to bring something to the table, right? Mm. So I'm now asking, it, this list, is, is it that is this list just filled with politicians and people that have held certain positions before, or is the list actually filled with technocrats? Do you believe or do you think that? Because, I mean, that's what is going to bring forth progress. It's not by packing all the politicians in the world and putting them in a min, ministerial list, right? The, the big question is, do these people actually know what it is that they are coming to offer? But then before Norma ask, um, answer this question, we have a caller. Youngest old man. Good evening, youngest old man. Hello? Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Go ahead, you're live. I mean, the network is not, not too good, but if you can hear me... We can hear I you. I think uh, one thing they need to be doing is to attach, I don't know if the law needs to go ahead for that, to attach their portfolio with whatever name they are sending so that we as citizens can easily at, uh, identify what the person is going to do and we can even back you up with prayer because for me now, there's nothing we can do that to pray for them to do it. Just like the son of the president said, that his father will not feel. I pray so because the way I'm collecting now, it's auto auto. <laughs> and I don't know where to put my feet at this moment. So, my honor is just to pray that they succeed. 
You understand? Mm. So they should attach the portfolio so we that are prayer orders will start praying for them in line with the prayer point of their portfolio. Mm. Even before they even get to the office. I think that is what they should need to do so that they announce the names. You know, the way you just uh, you show, uh, show the name, the portfolio should be there. So that we can start praying. That's all we can do. You know, I'm in Nigeria, we only pray. But uh, we don't do much. No way, Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, youngest old man. But you know, the truth is that you don't. They don't have to. It's all every, everywhere on the internet. If you just type in their names, you would see the things that they've done. You'd see what. I mean, that's how we found out some of these people and what it is that they've been some up are easy, to. Some are easy to find. Some, some are, are not, right? right? The, the, the third person that I spoke about, mm. it, it wasn't, there wasn't as a straightforward, lot right? About the him. first person, um, I think that was um, Stella. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, Stella. Yeah. Stella has. A website just right. dedicated to so her, everything that she has done, done mm. right? Um, for um, in Kiruka mm. Chidubem, I found her credentials on stairs, mm. but for Idris, it, it wasn't that straightforward. Yeah, I had to check different platforms before I could get something on him. So I think he actually needs to create a platform, like yeah. an actual portfolio, That's right? Yeah, needed. telling people what you have done, and I, I honestly agree with him. Well, I, I don't know how much prayers can do for people who <laughs> really don't want to do the work, dead. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I think um, yeah, experience is, is experience is very important. Mm. Putting the right people in the right positions, right? Don't take someone who has never managed projects before and then put them in a in a position where they have to manage multiple projects, or someone who knows nothing about health and then you put them in the health sector, or someone who has not who is not even interested in education, education and yeah. you put them in the education sector, right? They're just going to mess the whole thing up. So it's just hoping and praying mm. we need prayers, praying that they put the right people in the right position so they can deliver appropriately. Yeah. B before um, youngest of man called, I was asking, I was like, so are these ministers, are they supposed to be politicians or are they supposed to be technocrats? Right? In the sense of, okay, so, I mean, we know what technocrats are. They're supposed to be providing technical um, solutions, so to speak, to whatever problems or whatever parastatal it is that they're appointed into. So, I, I would, let me ask, let me hear from Unoma first, actually, before I come to Mary. Unoma, do you think that these people that we're seeing here are just going to bear the name ministers as politicians, or do you think they're actual technocrats? All right. Uh, Chinelo, um, I think from the list, um, looking at the list, I think there are a few technocrats on ground. We have uh, people like Olawale Edu, mm. yeah, and uh, one or two others. They're definitely, like I was saying before, you know, the network just uh, messed up. Yeah. Most of the, the first list is definitely going to be about settling people, those who were supportive during the campaign season and all of that. So definitely we're going to see some politicians. We're going to see um, different people come in. Technocrats are also part of the list. And um, it's it's going to be a mix. So we're seeing people who are uh, into um, channeling different causes, who are um, activists, depending on the way our president decides to tilt. Mm. By in another few years, I'm sure there's going to be a reshuffle based on um, how uh, they are performing in their different yeah. roles. Yeah. And I was, I was also saying, uh, um, alluding to what uh, Jennifer was saying, that putting square pegs in square holes will make a lot of difference. For people to be able... So if they're lobbying and they're choosing um, parastatals or ministries that where you feel that money is going to be involved, then that is going to be a challenge. Because when you put somebody in a place where they can't function, then it will be obvious that the person is in the wrong place. It will be all about the monies that they can take away without performing, without any form of performance on, on, on ground. So it's a mixture. There's going to be technocrats, there are politicians, and then eventually, I'm, I'm sure by the time they reshuffle or when the second list or the supplementary list will come out, more people will be, will, will be brought in. 
But if we remember during uh, Obasanjo's time, that some of the names that were brought up, people like uh, um, Obiese Kwesili, yeah. um, Ngozi Okonje, Iwala, yeah. these are people that not, were not uh, popular. They were not known, as it were, yeah. even though they had level of competence. By the time they started performing, we could see the difference that they made during that administration. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if this administration takes that path, of pick, picking people, not just for settling scores now, but yes. also bringing their competence to the table, then it will make a lot of difference mm. at the end of the day. So I, I, I just hope that in, the, in their decision making, that they're able to appropriately place these um, nominees or these appointees in positions where they can actually function. We have seen people like El Rufai when he was former minister of um, FCT, FCT, if yeah. I remember, mm -hmm. and the transformation he he made during his time. I can't vouch for that, uh, uh, for him as being a governor, right? But significantly, there was a lot of difference when he was the minister of, was it FCT or state? FCT, and all yeah. of that. So if people are placed in positions where it is a place of competence for them. It is easy for them to function. And hopefully we can see this, we can see it in this administration, including the women that have come on board. So it's not a situation where, oh, we're just doing the women a favor or mm -hmm. we're just putting them so that we could cover the quota that we, we have actually, uh, there's some level of inclusivity when mm. it comes to mm. the female gender. Yeah. Let it be based on the fact that these women have the competences, they have the skills to be able to deliver, and they are also positioned in places where they can actually function. Very true, very true. Very well said, Noma. Thank you very much. You know, I like when she brought in um, the, the, the person of OBS Equestly and the like yeah. of Nikojo Um, oh, who was really the... well as well who were ministers and were very, very functional. And as she said, you know, when those when those women were appointed, nobody knew them, yeah, actually. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. right through their performance and what they had done as ministers that we started to, you know, hear their names. and all. So, uh, I mean, personally, I'm hoping and I'm quite positive that we're go probably going to see, I'm not say a few, but most of the names here as people that would actually perform and and like Norma rightly said, bring something to the table based on the credibility that we have seen um, from them so far. There was a name that I, that I saw that somebody even called our attention to, Abu Bakar Momo, that, I mean, there was thinking that he was it, but apparently it is not the same man on the right. ministerial list, mm -hmm. actually. It is the Electoral Institute DG, Professor Abu Bakar Momo, that, was, that has just been reported dead, okay. not, the, not the same Abu Bakar Momo that has been um, mm -hmm. reported as uh, the ministerial List. Also, I realized that there are some states that were not represented because usually all the states, states are supposed to be represented. represented. I think there are about 11 states that are not represented here. So we're hoping to see that in the supplementary Second. list that comes out, we'll see other states being represented as well before they start to drag BHC. <laughs> Again, you know. I, th I think he does a good job in... Um in the delegation of oh, duties. And right. So, so definitely, I think everyone, every state will be sorted, or hopefully. Um, what we're just praying is this performance, performance, performance. Performance is very, very important. So um, it's an opportunity to either mark or break them. Uh, for the ones who have been under the limelight, it's an opportunity for them to say, hey, look, mm. there's still hope for the country, and you know we can do something. And I don't even think as Nigerians are asking for too much. We just have to Why not? Do, Why not? The basic thing. So, I mean, we're also reaching out to them to say, hey, this is an opportunity for you to be different. And we're hoping that something mm. great will come out of it. You know, the things, I'm also very happy that we're starting to, um, because these guys are going to realize that it's no longer business as usual, mm. and they can actually be held responsible, accountable. Um, accountable, rather. And the citizens are ready. They are waiting for you. Uh, see how everybody has been talking about this ministerialist. Before, we would see ministerialists, and me, I would not even be bothered. I would I just move on with my day. Like, hey, the ministerialist, okay, <laughs> we move. No, but you know, now everybody is, you know, waiting. Eh? Okay, let's even see what this person is going to be assigned. Let's see who is going to be minister of this. Let's see who is going to be minister of that. And you would see that, I mean, this is why we preach EIA, we do the Enough is Enough um, campaign on the show every Monday, right? Because the, the, the minute we realize that we need to start asking these questions, we need to start holding these people responsible. If we don't do that, people, 
we are just going to they're just going to give us whatever it is that they feel like giving us. I will just accept it and we all just wonder about complaining that things are not getting better, things are not getting better. It will definitely get worse. Jennifer is she's sighing like she has something to say. Jennifer <laughs> just hear that thought that you have to say. <laughs> so I think um one important thing that I will encourage um, them to take into consideration from now mm. is building the right team. Yeah. Mm. Right? Um, your team can break oh. or my you. And, and, and one thing you need is to make sure that you have the right people, people who have the same drive, mm. the same vision, and have the, they share the same value and culture as you, right, um, they will be the ones to push you on days when it feels very hard, on days when it is very tough, right? They'll be the ones to come up with great ideas, mm. right? Because, I mean, one person cannot do it all. Yeah. When you have an amazing team, people who are competent, not I did a favor for somebody and that's why I'm bringing you on my team or that's why you're working with me. Because at the end of the day, if you have a team of five people and three of them were brought in based on favoritism, right? And you only have two competent people, they will carry the bulk of the work on the team. And before you know it, they're going to have like, they're definitely going to burn out. And when you have burnout, you have people who are not delivering. They're no more churning out um, great ideas. At the end of the day, you're having... Um, low low performance in the team people are not being effective and we don't want that right people shouldn't see it as as business as usual yeah. you're coming in to serve the country to serve the states that you're being placed in so you have to do the work you have to take out time to actually pick the right people yeah. very very important yeah. but Thank i have you. a comment here yeah. um from daniel he said good evening my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying hashtag ways the ministerial list, will this bring progress? Honestly speaking, I don't really know all these people and their capabilities. Our present president, I hope he knows what he's doing as regards his selection of ministers because our past president made some errors and blunders in his selection and some of them failed to deliver. My dear beautiful sister Jennifer made mention of removing tribalism when choosing people to occupy an office, which I agree. Saying that this will bring progress, I really don't know. I am really excited that women were considered because it is about time. Let us look very well before we choose people to occupy an office because it is very important. You ladies look beautiful tonight. My dear beautiful sister Chinelo, so excited to see you anchoring the show today. Thank My you. name is Daniel Ilo. Thank Regular you so fan. much, Daniel. Hi, we Daniel. love to hear from you every day. <laughs> Thank you. Jennifer, do you, uh, Mary, do you have any comments, brother? Um, let's just spread love. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> now my final words. Well, we are watching. We are hoping that yeah. things will be better. Um, definitely, this is not the end of the list. We are waiting for supplementary list. Yeah. And um, we are waiting to see what how these uh, ministers will perform. I think Nigerians are gradually becoming better from where we are coming from. We're in a better place. People will start calling out, uh, calling people out if you're not performing. So let's, um, like I think Jennifer said, um, it's not going to be business as usual. I'm really, really interested in what ministerial position that we can will be uh, <laughs> occupying. But uh, I'll be patient to wait to see where he will be positioned. <laughs> but we're looking forward to what they can do. And if they're not going to perform, we're also looking forward to them being taken out. Oh, very true. Okay, um, I'll take what, this comment before we go. Good evening, ladies. Our president is following Buhari's steps by appointing ministers with no portfolio. And this is from Ade. Hmm. Oh, well, oh, well. I guess this is a conversation that we'll come back to when we see the final list and we also see the roles that these uh, ministers have been appointed, especially Wiki. Everybody is waiting Everyone for Everyone is waiting for Wiki. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow on all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quotes, here it is again. The way of an enlightened ruler is to make it so that no minister may make a proposal and then fail to match it with actions and results. And this is by Han Fei.
See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Unama. Good night.